Let's all stand for the reading of the Word of God. And uh, make sure you center this over here. It's not perfect. Fix it. Make it perfect. Turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 19, verses 41 through 48. This is Holy Day number 3 of Holy Week. And by the grace of God, I'm going to continue to preach in your hearing, as the old preachers used to say. Here comes the Compassionate Judge, Part 2. You might recall on Sunday I preached, Here comes the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This is a part of the Just Jesus Evangelistic Campaign, day one, uh, day 414 since January the 20th, 2017, day 781 since January the 1st, 2016, as the Just Jesus Evangelistic Campaign bus rolls on. The Bible reads, and when he was come near talking about Jesus he beheld the city and wept over it saying if thou hadst known even thou at least in this thy day the things which belong unto thy peace but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the days shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground Jesus is giving here a very detailed prophecy and uh, that actually happened in 70 AD and thy children within thee and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation and he went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein and them that bought saying unto them it is written my house is the house of prayer from this passage we call our church ministry gospel light house of prayer evangelism and prayer joined together saying unto them it is written my house is the house of prayer but ye have made it a den of thieves and he taught daily in the temple but the chief priests and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him and could not find what they might do for all the people were very attentive to hear him, that is Jesus. Holy Father God in heaven, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you and we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see another holy week here on earth. Could very well be our last 
And so, Lord, help us to truly worship you in spirit and in truth, to give you praise as we celebrate Good Friday, your death. And death is a strange thing. Uh, but we celebrate your triumphant resurrection on Sunday. And we thank you, Holy Father God, for your plan of salvation. We thank you, Holy Father God, for your system of grace. And all that you have done and all that you're doing and all that you will do from beginning to end. We individually confess our sins, our failures, and our faults unto you. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive us of our sins as we from our hearts, by your grace, forgive those who have sinned against us. And Lord, fill us all as Christians with the fullness and the power, the unction and the anointing, the fruit and the liberty. Lord of your Holy Spirit and Lord comfort heavy hearts as we prayed for many others uh, Lord we pray for our own that you would comfort their hearts and uh, help them to always keep their hearts and minds stayed on you the God and creator of all of us and everything and the God who will make everything all right at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and Holy Father God we pray that until then we will continue to hold up the blood-stained banner give us your grace and your strength and the power of your Holy Spirit to do that for only you can do that and uh, to preach your Holy Gospel and we pray that over three million souls would come to know your Savior. Three million Christians would be revived for real and get, and get back to their first love. Uh, Lord, and we pray for over three million dollars uh, to help all of the uh, indigenous pastors, missionaries, and evangelists who are crying out for uh, help with very uh, small things that they need to make their ministry go better and we want to be a bigger part of that and uh, not just through prayer but a bigger part of actually being uh, used by you to answer those prayers for the for these dear people and Holy Father God we pray that your holy name will be glorified Jesus Christ would be exalted and Satan always horrified as he has always tried to horrify people. Uh, Lord, uh, help him to feel uh, the footsteps of Jesus. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, on Palm Sunday, we observed the triumphal entry of the Lord Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. But that was only the beginning of a climatic series of events ending in the, and if you will, beginning in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. On yesterday, I gave you a broad introduction 
of this entire week or at least the beginning of the week a week I call the most exciting and most eventful week in the history of the world and let me say to you at the outset some of you are going through a very difficult time some of you are faced with trials and temptations illnesses sicknesses very painful things even deaths in the family and uh, and we have others all around us who are going through far worse daughters being stolen from bus stops and brutally raped and murdered 17 children in the prime of life pre-prime of life shot point-blank and killed some are still recovering from their injuries people still suffering from the mass murder in Las Vegas last year uh, two children died in a ferocious fire just a day ago the brother was able to jump out by the grace of God jump out of the, the window and somehow he survived in Siberia I know some of you may not care about the folks in Siberia but somehow in a mall people have, were killed uh, in a tragic situation there in Afghanistan folks killed from a bombing and that's just the ones that reach the news there are many people who die and who suffer and who are abused and who are sold into slavery we don't hear anything about but God knoweth and so Holy Week is a great reminder that we have to deal with death because of sin but through Christ we have and through God we have the resurrection and new life and our hope is built on nothing less, less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness amen somebody we have no other hope our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness and so beloved on yesterday we saw the Lord as the compassionate judge and we have many people today who need compassion I thank God for the compassion of the Lord uh, God has wired me in such a way that I really do not need much compassion from people uh, but everybody is not wired that way And he wired that way because me he call, because he called me to preach in such a way that will upset people, rattle their cages, and uh, make the comfortable uncomfortable. And I try to comfort those who are comfortless when God gives me the grace and the mind to do so. But the message that God has given to me is not a fun message it's not a happy message other than the gospel uh, but judgment must begin at the house of God and uh, there are things that are wrong in the church and uh, God has ordained me and called me to not only be an evangelist but a prophet if you will at least in the spirit of the prophets of old and so therefore people are not going to like me that much I have been preaching for over 30 years on the family on the home 
the downfall of many Bible believing churches, be they independent Baptist, Southern Baptist, National Baptist, Bible Baptist, Bible churches have been destroyed, have been have lost their uh, savor, have lost their power because we do things well in many areas but we somehow think that we uh, can have a home life that does not line up with the Word of God. In every denomination, every group of people who think that they can be great church men and great church women but have hell in the home have hypocrisy and lying and dishonesty and adultery and fornication and abuse in the home are woefully deceived uh, for this thinking is like uh, termites is going to eat out uh, the house from the inside out and now we're seeing holes in the buildings of the house all over the place why because husbands don't love their wives as they should or they like to say it in the, on a little Twitter page I am the husband of a bunch of hypocritical talk they like to say it because they know it works and getting people to listen to you but at home that's not the case God knows it and the wife knows it and the children know it and he knows it we have wives who refuse to submit to their husbands and because the parents are disobedient the children are disobedient and rebellious and stubborn parents are reaping what they have sown <clears throat> so therefore the way God has wired me I don't need many friends I don't need much encouragement I don't need much compassion from human beings I thank God for the compassion from the Lord but many people need compassion today not only from the Lord but from people who have the gift of mercy and the gift of of helps thank God for those people thank God for those multi gifted pastors the general practitioners of the church who have that compassion thing in spades they have it going on that that love thing that uh, showing mercy thing and is sincere we thank God for that we need good pastors who can find you where you are and not judge you but help you through I thank God for my pastors so on yesterday we saw the Lord as the compassionate judge the coming we called it the coming of the compassionate judge uh, here comes the compassionate judge on Sunday we titled the message here comes the King of Kings and Lord of Lords uh, I could not finish the message on yesterday so we have a part two today this compassionate judge Jesus Christ Emmanuel God with us who wept over the city of Jerusalem Jesus's words and actions in this passage after his arrival in the city reveal both God's mercy and God's wrath towards sinners first we see the compassionate heart of Jesus Christ the broken loving heart of the Lord Jesus Christ who cared for 
his chosen people as well as all of us it's sort of like the the broken heart of a parent who has a child that has so much potential but she foolishly squanders her potential and time away it's like a parent who has a son who has so much potential so much talent but he squanders his talent and his time gets caught up in foolishness and mess ends up in jail ends up being a huge disappointment and so Jesus felt this way towards his chosen people that day it's a sad thing to know how things could have been for somebody but they refused to obey they refused to listen they refused to take heed the Bible says when he beheld the city he wept over it uh, the people in Jerusalem did not see anything to weep over because they were blinded to their own enmity with God and God was right there with them Emmanuel God with us <clears throat> and that <clears throat> and that got to Jesus as well knowing that he had created these people and yet the religious community wanted him destroyed Jesus as the Son of God and Redeemer of man was easily able to look at Jerusalem and her inhabitants in relation to himself the temple stones were large and beautiful but they were actually worthless <coughs> because there was no welcome for Jesus in his father's house they hated Jesus with a passion and he never did them wrong in fact remember he created them in the condition of Jerusalem Jesus saw the condition of every human heart <clears throat> full of religious pretense and a religious tradition by the way what's killing the church today is religious tradition in many churches in many churches we have our little rituals our traditions and we fall right on off into the church and we keep on doing what we've always done for a hundred years some case in some cases lost and on their way to hell this is how it was passed down to me thank God for those churches that are broken away from tradition and got back to the Bible actually uh, false cruel desolate and deceived people he wept over them he wept over it Jerusalem and as he looks into the hearts of men and women today he sees the same sad thing Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart and you will not let him in 
Jesus is knocking on the outside on the church door and even religious people in the church won't let him in that they, they don't even recognize Jesus Jesus is a person and so this grieves his heart he created the world he created you he created the church and yet you don't even recognize him we have many in the church who are blinded to Christ they don't even recognize him just like these religious folks didn't recognize him and then we see the words of judgment proclaimed by Jesus secondly speaking to Jerusalem Jesus says the days shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and uh, keep thee in on every side they will surround you they will hem you in and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children with thee and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation I am your God I am your Savior I created you from nothing and you are so blind in your religious activity that you cannot even recognize me and receive me into the house of the Lord which is the house of prayer not and should not be a den of thieves amen somebody Christ spoke of the destruction which would come upon Jerusalem at the hands of Rome in 70 AD likewise our own souls face utter destruction if we reject the Savior today as Jerusalem rejected Jesus at the end of the week Jesus is not willing that any should perish but that all would come to him and trust him as Savior come to repentance however even his tearful compassion does not prevent him from speaking these words of truth and warning and uh, yea doom through the tears Jesus uh, predicted destruction because they rejected God they rejected the Savior of the world the light of the world and as we called him on Sunday more importantly as the Bible calls him the King of Kings and Lord of Lords the bread of life the rose of Sharon the lily of the valley the Alpha and the Omega notice how humble God is and Jesus did not just speak words he judged the false religion of the Jews that day he went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein and them that bought yes those who made a profit off of God's house the house of prayer they made it the house of profit not the prophet in the Bible but the P-R-O-F-I-T by the way I resent uh, this prophet guy on television on CNBC they call him a prophet but they're talking about he's a false prophet they're talking about money they made a profit off of the house of prayer they made a profit off of the house of God I said it yesterday and I'll say it again we need another 
a bonfire of the vanities. So many of our churches have been infected with the disease of the pro, uh, the prosperity gospel, which is no gospel. Because if everybody can't be prosperous, then there's no gospel. Everybody can be saved through the gospel. That does not mean everybody is going to profit and prosper. And have a big fine house on Porkchop Hill. If your lowest church member living in the projects can't drive a Bentley, then you should not drive a Bentley. You do what you want. But we have too many preachers, too many priests who are living high on the hog out of the money that comes in to the house of God which is the house of prayer and they hardly ever pray some of the least praying people in the church are pastors don't tell me otherwise because I know I've had pastors to tell me they struggle with prayer. They don't pray as they should. It is a fearful thing to fall as an unbeliever into the hands of the living God. Neither a nation nor an individual can ultimately prosper if they reject and resist the pleadings of the Lord Jesus Christ. The same Jesus who wept and died for humanity, not for humanity, but every human being, will judge the quick and the dead. And so finally today, ladies and gentlemen, on this Tuesday of Holy Week we see the influence of Jesus the power of the Lord during the week of his passion Christ taught daily in the temple daily notice that word daily the saints followed that in the early church they they worshiped God and preached the gospel daily. They prayed daily together. We need more churches to go back to the early church model, to Jesus' model, and be in the temple, if you will, be at the house of God, preaching daily, daily, daily. And the chief priests sought to destroy him, for all the people were attentive to hear him. To some, Christ was the specter of death. Uh, to others, the sweet savour of life. Some hearts grew hard as they listened to him. Others grew soft and tender as it is today maybe not as much as it used to be for the love of many has waxed cold uh, many people's hearts are so hard that they can't even hear the gospel they can't see God's love. So just like the sun which melts wax but hardens clay, so was the preaching and the teaching of the Lord. Everything depends on the attitude of the individual toward Jesus Christ. 
as to whether his influence will melt us under salvation or harden us for judgment. The preaching of the cross is either foolishness to us or it is the wisdom and salvation of God. Amen, somebody. How will your heart respond to the Son of God? Will you melt like wax or harden like clay? I hope that your heart is tender to the calling of the Lord on this day in this holy week. Will Thompson wrote long ago, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling for you and for me. Patiently, Jesus is waiting and watching watching for you and for me. Time is now fleeting. The moments are passing, passing from you and from me. Shadows are gathering. Deathbeds are coming. Deathbeds are coming. Deathbeds are coming for you and for me. Oh, for the wonderful love he has promised, promised for you and for me. Though we have sinned, uh, he has mercy and pardon, pardon for you and for me. Come home. Come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O sinner, come home. So dear friend, this morning in Holy Week, come home by letting Jesus Christ into your heart today. That is why he came into the world and died on the cross. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that he died for your sins, was buried and rose from the dead by the power of God for you and for me so that we can live eternally with him. Jesus Christ didn't just die on the cross to save your soul from hell. He did. He preached more on hell than any other prophet in the Bible. He preached more on hell than he did about heaven as a warning to you and to me. But he also died, please understand, for our sins on Good Friday so that you can go to heaven to be with him and to be with the Heavenly Father God. Uh, this is why we not only call it amazing grace but amazing love. It is measureless. And I'm one of those preachers that believes that you will see your pets in heaven as well for those of you who love pets. God is so wonderful. God is so great. God created everything. And everything that is good, you'll see there because of his might and his power. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 13 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, and thou, you, shalt be saved. Pray and ask him to save your soul today, and he will save you in Holy Week. Don't leave out of Holy Week unsaved and on your way to hell. Trust Christ as Savior. I'll be glad to lead you in 
that famous prayer now called the sinner's prayer. Millions have prayed it or something close to it. And uh, they mocked that day as the day they got saved. I did it December the 19th, 1979. I have a friend uh, who did it uh, about four years after I did. And he remembers his date. Remember this date, Holy Week, Tuesday. And trust Christ as Savior. All of my children, uh, their birth, their salvation date is uh, on their seventh birthday. So they celebrate two birthdays. And their most important birthday is their born again day. So trust Christ as Savior today. Follow me in prayer, phrase by phrase, and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I acknowledge that I am a sinner deserving death and hell. Have mercy and grace upon my soul and forgive me of all of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart in your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for my sins, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul. And change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And help me to change. Help me to repent of my sins past. Help me to turn from my old sinful ways. And help me to follow you in the new life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, if you believed in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ this morning, that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, he shed his blood on the cross for your sins, was buried because he truly died and rose again on the third day, allow me to say to you, congratulations on doing the most important thing in life and that is simply trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior accepting him as your Lord and Savior and, and believing the gospel the gospel the death burial and resurrection of Christ for more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ please go to gospel light society.com and read my pamphlet what to do after you enter through the door Jesus Christ said in John 10 9 I am the door by me of any man enter in he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture dear friend if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today Please email me at dw3 at gospelitesociety.com or one of our other, many other emails on different platforms and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well. And we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Most people don't tell us to stop. Uh, they just uh, send more prayer requests in and want us to keep on praying for them. After God has answered the, uh, their prayers and our prayers for them. Because we believe what the Bible says, what Jesus said. Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. Until next time, my beloved, God loves you. We love you. And may God bless you real good.